Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalen Centre. Today I'm doing the Science and Seasons report for the week commencing the 24th of January, highlighting the key transits and aspects taking place this week, along with the themes that they outline, so we can understand what the energy is going to be doing this week and how we can make use of it. So before I go into the aspects themselves, I just want to confirm as a way that the plants have, don't control us, they don't um, forced to do anything, the merely set of influences like the weather. If you know what the weather's going to be doing, you can then adjust your actions accordingly and adjust your plans accordingly. Um, but the weather itself doesn't control us, it's just an influence that can set the tone of a day or can influence what activities we do and don't do. Um, astrology is similar in that way in that if we understand what the influences are, we can align with them and make best use of the energy based on the themes and unfolding. So I'll start off with the Moon's passage through the signs as usual. So we start off with the Moon in Aries. So this will be a time of taking action, of um, making that initial thrust forward towards any goals we have set. Um, but this, the Moon moves into Taurus on the same day, so um, i.e. Wednesday. So the Moon in Taurus will be more time for slowing down, of getting connected, um, or feeling rooted and grounded. Um, maybe spending more time in nature if we can, just to get that um, experience or get that environment of being able to slow down, of reconnecting with the natural cycles rather than trying to rush ahead outside of natural timing. Then on Friday, the moon will move into Gemini, so this will be a time where we may feel the need to communicate with others, to spend time socialising, exchanging ideas with one another and doing a bit of research on our goals to get us more information to work with which may then lead to adjustments in the goals that we set. Then on Sunday the moon enters her home sign of Cancer and this is a time of going inwards, of embracing our emotional um, nature. We may decide to spend more time at home if we can, just relaxing and just you know, dealing with nourishing our emotional side, nourishing our inner landscape to make sure that we don't feel cut off from our emotions. And then on Tuesday, the moon moves into Leo, and it's a time of looking at things like expressing ourselves, sharing emotional warmth with one another, sharing love with one another, and having to nurture each other's self-expression. And this, um, is over the course of this week, the energy is going to be building towards the lunar eclipse in Leo, which will be next Wednesday on the 31st, so that will be included in the next week's report rather than this one. But it's important to know the energy will be ramping up towards that, so themes highlighted by the lunar eclipse will start to um, come to light beforehand as we feel the energy building up towards it. Now, this week Mercury is going to be a key player um, in terms of his aspects. He moved into Capricorn last week and now with Mercury has been moving towards the conjunction with Pluto and this is going to be exact on Thursday. So Mercury is obviously, it deals with our intellect, it deals with the mental faculties that deal with the day-to-day -day functioning rather than abstract ideas. So Mercury is about logic, it's about thinking, it's about communication and about our you know, daily perceptions. Um, so this, with these functions are going to be challenged by Pluto um, so what Pluto does is it transforms to polarising something. Mercury normally just deal, skims over the surface level of reality and deals with the immediate um, nature of things. But with this conjunction with Pluto, we may find our minds stretched and transformed um, through having mental attachments that we may not have been aware of highlighted to us. And the mind or the rational mind stretched into two camps, the a positive and negative, um, with the negative dealing with things like mental attachments, resistance to new ideas, closed mindedness, and obviously the positive being receptive to transformative energy, receptive to new insights, and receptive to ideas and notions that come beyond the normal day to day level of thinking. And during this time, we may need to purge these um, negative um, mental attachments, negative perceptions, in order to see more clearly. So it's about 
moving from um, the egoic perception to seeing with the eye of the soul and this can be quite challenging depending on how um, attached we are to our way of thinking, our way of perceiving, our way of communicating because Plato challenges all this and highlights to us where do we cling to old thinking patterns which don't actually serve us and are actually very limiting and keep us looking at things which aren't actually true but we want them to be so we all have our own idea of what reality is based on our perceptions but we all have perceptual biases as well and with Pluto here it's going to be highlighting preferably stripping away some of the negative perceptions or our blind spots but we have to be willing to embrace the process it's not something that is forced upon us but if we don't consciously use this opportunity to transform our minds then yeah, we could still carry on looking at things through a very narrow perception and we don't we don't see perhaps a surface level reality we just look at um, surface details or at face value rather than finding the hidden side of things or the underlying truth of a situation so the aspect will be exact on Thursday but we're feeling it for most of the week and the other um, key aspect with or well, there's two aspects in fact we have Mercury's going to be sextile and Karam is also going to be squaring Uranus. Now, these two aspects are both going to be exact on Sunday. So, with Mercury square to Uranus, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, it's the higher mind if to Mercury's lower mind. So, the two of them are related, but with the square, this could indicate a significant resistance to the idea of change. It could mark um, where we struggle to, or part our egoic mind doesn't want to embrace changes or new insights because it would challenge its authority. But the important thing to remember is the high and low minds are not meant to be enemies at all, they're meant to work together. Without the high mind, the low mind can't be transformed, but without the lower minds, the insights of the high mind can't be implemented. So the two of them needs are important for each other. But with the square, it can indicate the two clashing rather than working together. And it's up to us to um, figure out why is it that we're resistant to changes? Um, why is it that we want to ignore the insights coming through our intuition? Why, do we, why are we trying to shut out any kind of new revelations about reality, of the truth, and what's going on around us? And how can we reconcile these two? How can we bring peace to them together? Because if we don't transform our minds, we get stuck. And Uranus is about awakening to higher truths of a higher level of reality, a higher vision. But we have to engage in the process ourselves and make the choice to. Because like anything else, it's not forced upon us, but with Uranus being electric, if we try and ignore um, these insights um, and try to shut it out. We may feel this as a sort of restlessness of the mind or an anxiety without really knowing why we're feeling it. But if we take the time to slow down and allow the higher mind to guide our thought patterns, to guide our visions and to implement the insights that we gain, then we can make the best use of this um, period. But this is a point of seeing are we still receptive to changes or do we resist them all the time? The other aspect that I mentioned is Mercury sextile to Chiron. So this is a time of with Chiron being in you know, Pisces and highlighting the wounds of disconnection. The sextile to Mercury gives us an opportunity to mentally understand this, to figure out what is it, um, or to mentally analyse why do we feel disconnected, why do we shut ourselves off, or why do we allow fears to cut us off from source do we feel that we're not worthy of love is that what um, causes us to engage with dysfunctional behavior and um, do we feel that um, we have to be in control of everything in order to make things happen because Pisces is about surrender and universal love and with Chiron here, we're looking at the wound of disconnection and the feeling that we've been abandoned by um, God, abandoned by the universal consciousness, whatever you, label you choose to give it. 
but at the end of the day that consciousness is always there available for us to tap into it but we have to make the choice to connect with it ourselves it's not something that we're going to be forced to do it's something that we have to want to do it and we have to choose to do it otherwise it's just not going to happen nothing's going to no one nothing has the authority to force us to do that we've all been given free will and it's our choice as to whether we choose to connect with a higher power and let that love flow through us, cleanse us of our dysfunctional behaviours and shed a light on the fears that drive our um, disconnection and to overcome them through developing self-love, of self-compassion and self-forgiveness. Um, now the other change is Mars is moving into Sagittarius on um, Thursday. It's been in Scorpio for the past six weeks or so and during this period Mars has been ha highlighting dysfunctional desires. It's been showing or well, being an opportunity to transform our desire nature and therefore our, and by default our actions because they're the external manifestation of our desires. We pref Ideally we would be pursuing what we want to pursue, we wouldn't be cutting after something pretending that we want it when we know we don't. But Scorpio is about that purification and the transformation of the desire function from pursuing egoic needs to transforming into spiritual devotion um, through cutting ties with the past, of letting go of the need for vengeance or um, letting go of unforgiveness and allowing the transformative energy of Scorpio to strip away the egoic desires, leaving just the desires that stem from our souls. But now with Mars moving into Sagittarius, the desires are going to be more along the lines of understanding who we are in relation to the wider world, how are we connected to everything around us. Because Sagittarius is the beginning of transpersonal consciousness or collective, it's understanding who we are as part of a greater whole. We, we realise that we're no longer just isolated individuals, we're part of something much greater and what we do um, has an impact on that. So this is a time for that we have an opportunity to align our um, actions and our desires with a desire for self-understanding, of a desire for understanding natural laws and aligning our actions with them. It's and this, this recognizing that life is a journey, it's not a destination. So it's enjoying that journey. It's think of it like a pilgrimage. We come um, here, we're here to learn things and it's all one continuous journey. Um, but we have to engage in the process and we have to keep an open mind. But we, during this period, we also need to, the shadow of Mars and Sagittarius can be pursuing uh, or thinking, well, I want it all, so I'm going to go after it all. It can be stretching ourselves thin, and it can be fanatical actions and desires. So this does need to be tempered um, if we want the positive side of Mars and Sagittarius to manifest. But if we remember to let love be our guide rather than fear, and if we let remember that it's the transformation that we did, went through in Scorpio in order to align our actions and desires with what the soul is after rather than the ego, then we can avoid this pitfall. We need to know who we are at the deepest level and allow that to be our guiding force. So it's letting the higher self guide rather than the base, base nature of the ego. And if we can bring the actions um, and the quest for self-understanding and self-knowledge and understanding who we are in the wider world, then we can also become, this often leads to a more generous nature, a kinder nature, and more warm and outgoing, where we sh we work together and well with other people, we engage in shared activities. So this is very outgoing, so it may feel at a time where we want to spend more time outdoors, exploring, understanding um, the big picture, looking for lessons that we can learn in our day-to-day -day environment, but also in things like long-distance travel. So this is a time for transforming our actions and our desires, um, or aligning them with the need to understand who we are at a deep level, who we are in relation to the world around us, and um, learning to align our actions 
with the natural laws because Sagittarius deals with natural laws and these laws are all they're visible all around us in one way or another spending time in nature can be a great way to understand this to understand things like cause and effect and to realize that our actions you know, being the cause and will always have an effect and the motivation behind that so the desire function that drives the action will determine what it is that we manifest and how things occur and what kind of effects we bring to us so if we can align our actions with these natural laws like the cause and effect then we can become much more conscious and we find it's likely to generate karma for ourselves through our actions and if we're aware of the bigger picture we're, we're less likely to engage in actions um, no, or knowingly engage in actions that will cause harm or destruction to anybody else so this week there's a lot of transformation involved especially for the um, our left um, brain so the logical mind and rational thinking on our communication it's also a time where the focus of our actions and desires will be shifting so this week is a very transformative one and as I said earlier on it is a build up towards the eclipse season where things during that period anything that no longer serves our lives we may find it naturally um, fading away and clearing space for new beginnings so this is a time beforehand where we can start getting ourselves ready of allowing the mental our mind to be transformed and shed the any attachments to things and this then makes it easy for us then to let go of the things which are no longer of any use for us no longer serve a purpose in our lives and need to be let go of because they're just going to hold us back and prevent us from taking the next step on our own personal journey because if we want anything new to happen we have to clear the space for it but we also have to be mentally prepared for that and ready for it so this week is very good for that of getting clear on who we are what we need what um we kind of think about or how we perceive things and to learn to embrace wisdom and incorporate this into what we're doing so that our actions are um, guided by wisdom rather than just egoic desires and our mind is attuned to it so that we understand what is the wise course of action and what is um, just going to cause problems for us and then align ourselves with the actions that are beneficial for ourselves and for others and will allow us to achieve any goals we have but we have to be aware of where we're resistant to change, resistance to you know, transformation of the mind and resistance to allowing any new insights to come through that would challenge our current understanding of reality. So I hope that's a useful guide for this week, I hope it brings you a lot of growth and a lot of change and many blessings. Take care.